This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Associated Equipment Distributors. I'm Associate Editor Ben Thorpe. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. This week, two notable acquisitions were announced in the ag equipment industry. First, Linamar Corporation announced on December 20th its intent to acquire implement manufacturer Borgo for $480 million. This follows Linamar's 2017 acquisition of Macdon and its 2022 acquisition of Salford Group. During a webcast following the announcement, Linamar Executive Chair and CEO Linda Hasenfrat stated, We doubled Macdon's business in five years. We hope to do the same with Borgo. Also on December 20th, Bueller Industries, which manufactures the versatile and farm king equipment lines, announced that Turkish ag equipment manufacturer Bashak Tractor would acquire all the common shares of the company owned by Russian combine manufacturer Rolzelmash. The aggregate cash purchase price to be paid by Bashak Tractor's parent company, Asco Holding, is $45 million. According to John Deere's annual report filed with the SEC on December 15th, the company spent just over $3.5 billion on dealer sales incentives in its fiscal year 2023. Total sales incentive accruals were up 49% year-over-year from $2.4 billion in 2022. Most of this increase came from accruals in trade accounts receivable, which was up 73% year-over-year to $2.3 billion in 2023. The company stated some factors impacting accruals recorded against receivables in 2023 were higher incentives for dealer market share and incentives provided to offset elevated interest rates. Deere's annual spending on research and development rose again in 2023, up 14% to $2.2 billion. Deere also gave details on two acquisitions it made in 2023 in its annual report. In March, Deere acquired Spark AI, a New York-based startup with applications in agriculture that support functions like obstacle detection and avoidance. Along with Deere's July acquisition of precision spraying equipment company Smart Apply, the combined cost of these two acquisitions was $82 million. In 2022, the total cost of Deere's ag-related acquisitions was $410 million. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thank you very much, Ben. This week, we're getting an up-close look at Pegasus Robotics XAG P100 Pro. It's built as the largest and fastest drone on the market, can hold up to 14 gallons and travel up to 31 miles per hour while spraying. Danielle Helen gives us a look at the top five features that really differentiate this drone from others on the market. The speed and size for one. Um, Another thing is definitely the blades being constructed like this to give it uh, relief on the motors. Um, I like the cord management. Uh, Another huge difference is that the drone itself, so the spray and spreader tank actually attaches to the bottom of this drone by these latches right here. So you can actually easy unlatch the drone, grab by these handles right here and pull it off to switch out a tank if you need to. It's super simple in my opinion and makes it really easy to change out the tanks. Another thing that really sets it apart from its competitors is that the batteries actually charge in water. So it actually helps them cool down a lot faster when you're outside running these on hot days and they don't overheat. Um, It's also just something really unique. Like you wouldn't think about putting a battery in a tub of water to charge it. (laughs) The XAG P100 Pro with battery kit is listed at just under $35,000 on the Pegasus Robotics website. For more information, head to precisionfarmingdealer.com. In the technology corner, I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Noah. The results of the latest farm equipment text poll suggest a quarter of dealers are likely to add additional product lines in the new year. The December 19th poll asked dealers how likely they are to take on a new equipment line in 2024. 25.5% of dealers said they were likely to add a new line, while 74.5% said it was unlikely that they would expand their product offerings in the year ahead. To be a part of future text polls, text FARM to 833-413-2175 to sign up. In Kloss's recently released annual report, the company reported $6.7 billion in 2023 net sales, a 25% year-over-year increase from $5.4 billion in 2022. Kloss's total annual net sales have increased every year for the past four years. Total net sales for the North and South America region came in at $1.1 billion in 2023, 
up 17% year over year. Prior to 2022, Kloss did not break out its revenue for the North and South America region. The company said significant growth was generated in North America through new machine sales of combines and forage harvesters. Kloss also said in the report that it expects demand for ag equipment to decline overall in Central and Western Europe as well as in North America in its fiscal year 2024. The company said that amid normalizing inventories and without the effects associated with the supply chain related deliveries of prior year orders that had a positive effect on the past fiscal year, it expects a moderate year over year decrease in sales in its fiscal year 2024. Kloss's total trade receivables were valued at $773 million as of September 30th of this year, up 55% year over year. Kloss described this increase as significant and said it was due in part to a substantial rise in sales. Kloss's inventories were valued at $1.6 billion as of September 30th, a 7% year-over-year increase. Kloss's reported inventory has increased in value every year for the past three years. During a presentation for the Agriquipment Intelligence 2024 Executive Briefing on December 7th and 8th, TractorZoom Director of Insights Andy Campbell reported industry supplies of self-propelled sprayers were up 44% in November compared to one year ago. At the same time, pricing was up 12% at the dealership level year over year. So with, even despite those increases in supply, we're still seeing really strong price increases year over year, both at auction at 20% roughly, 12% at dealership lots. I've got the asterisks in there for the auction. Just to remind myself that at the time of taking this, there was only about seven uh, legitimate sales in November that I could pull data from. And so since though, there had been a lot more and was just talking with a couple other dealers whose um, initiative is to really move sprayers yet this year. And so I think we're going to see some aggressive moves on sprayers. And it's just a matter of a, a question of what is that going to do to the valuation that we see in the auction market. Campbell noted there was only a brief period between January and April of this year when sales of self-propelled sprayers outpaced the rate at which sprayers were being added to dealers' lots. An interesting trend, obviously, there's seasonality with selling sprayers that only for a brief period, for a little bit in 23, did sales outpace uh, what was being added to the lot. And then obviously in your off seasons, that's not the case. Uh, so we'll see as we go into 24, if sales are out, able to outpace uh, what's coming to the, to the market. Because remember that November through March timeframe was was really good time. Uh, it was a great buying season uh, for farmers. Things sold at a premium, and that's likely not going to persist into 24. And so I think that time is uh, of the essence right now with sprayers and that their heyday is limited. Campbell presented similar market analysis on combines and row crop tractors, as well as gave his market predictions for 2024 at this year's executive briefing. You can purchase access to replays of this year's session in the link in the description. This week's data point is brought to you by the 2024 Precision Farming Dealer Summit. According to Agco's SEC filings, the company's number of North American dealers and distributors has declined for the last three years, coming in at 1,735 for its 2022 annual report, which was filed March 1st of this year. This represents a 7.5% decline from 1,875 dealers and distributors in 2019 the only region to see year-over-year -year growth in the number of dealers and distributors for 2022 was South America, which rose to 265. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and store suggestions to bthorpe at lespub.com. From all of us at Ag Equipment Intelligence and Farm Equipment, thank you for joining us throughout 2023. We're excited to see what 2024 has to offer. For On the Record, I'm Ben Thorpe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next year. Mm -hmm.